everyone. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat, sa ating mga kapatiran dito sa Pilipinas, yung nasa UAE and to the other parts of the world, and to our VIPs and those uh, brethren who are watching us online. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Today, we shall continue with our series which is entitled, Make His Heart Our Heart, Walk Like Jesus Walked. And our series anchor verse comes from 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, which says, Whoever claims to live as Christian must live as Jesus did. Once again, I would like to thank God for this great opportunity to be able to share His message to all of you today. But before I shall start with my message, allow me to ask you this question. Are you struggling at the moment? Do you need hope? Who among you here hopes for something to happen? Who among you here have been praying for something to happen? Either with your family, with your husband, with your children, with your career, with your love life. Sino po dito sa atin yung mga na-UTI, yung umibig tapos iniwan? I know many of you, just like me, are going through tough times. Parang roller coaster yung buhay. And you desire and hope that something good will come out, out of your fervent prayer. Everyone hopes for something to happen, and hope helps us define our future. But how can we suffer and still have hope in our heart? The Bible says there is hope in Jesus. But how can we find that hope? I pray that this message will touch your heart and give some encouragement. The title of my message today says, Hope, Trusting in God's Faithfulness. Our anchor verse comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verses 17 to 19, which says, Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Listen, my son, and be wise, and set your heart on the right path. Our reading comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. I know most of you are familiar with this story from the Bible. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is the story. Let's read. Please read it with me. Verse 13 onwards, it says, Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods? or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, cither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, Your Majesty, that we will not serve your gods 
or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times higher than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, and turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped into his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and throw into that fire? They replied, Certainly, Your Majesty, he said. Look, I see four men walking around in the fire unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come out here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads since. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Let's pray. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. We pray, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit to help us understand the message that you will reveal to us today. Father God, I humble myself before you, and I entrust, Lord, the message, Lord God, that you will reveal to us today will touch everyone's heart. I pray for your wisdom, for your anointing on every word that will come out from my mouth, O oh God, that it will only glorify your name. In this I ask in Jesus' name, Amen. I know most of you are familiar with the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, during that time, the Babylonian army destroyed and took captive all survivors in Jerusalem. And they were, they were sent to, to Babylon. And uh, they were there to be exiled. All the officers, the fighting men, the craftsmen, and the artisans, including Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So King Nebuchadnezzar, hired all these uh, intelligent men, handsome, like uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were sent for exile in Babylon to serve the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar, who was so prideful, made an order that all men in Babylon should worship the image of gold that he set up. They should worship the gods that they made. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not consent with the desire of King Nebuchadnezzar to worship him. They stood on their faith in the Lord. They feared the Lord. They feared God rather than King Nebuchadnezzar. I would like to focus my discussion on the conversation of King Nebuchadnezzar and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When 
King Nebuchadnezzar ordered uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to worship the image of gold that he set up and the other gods that they made. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not consent with King Nebuchadnezzar. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just reasoned out to King Nebuchadnezzar that they don't have to defend themselves. And they said, and declared it to themselves, that the God they serve is able to deliver them. And that He will deliver them. So that was the declaration of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was the faith that they have. And they even said that even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image you have set up. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego has that deep relationship and faith in the Lord. They did not fear King Nebuchadnezzar even if their lives were threatened. They did not fear King Nebuchadnezzar's threat upon their lives even if it will cost their lives. They feared God rather than King Nebuchadnezzar. And that angered that put rage on King Nebuchadnezzar. So it was really an insult. Napakalaking insult to Puyon kay King Nebuchadnezzar because he was a very powerful king at that time. He was a brilliant king. And for these people, his servants to, to tell him that, no, we do not consent with you. So, it was a big insult, a slap on the face of King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, let us try to find out what is in the heart of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What puts hope in the hearts to say and to not consent with King Nebuchadnezzar? I have realized and uh, discovered three points from our reading. Number one is that trials, no matter how devastating they are, bring forth good. Trials has a purpose in our lives. It is for God's glory. Hope springs forth from faith. Dahil sa lalim ng pagkakakilala, dahil sa lalim ng panalampalataya nila, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, hindi sila nawalan ng pag-asa. Doon sila humugot ng pagtitiwala sa ating Panginoon. Doon sila humugot ng pag-asa. Yung kanilang malalim na pagkakilala, yung kanilang malalim na pananampalataya sa ating Panginoon. And the third point that I would like to share is that God can turn your hopeless into hopeful. Para po doon sa mga nawawala ng pag-asa. For those who, ha who are now struggling so hard, especially with the pandemic, for those who lost their loved ones, for those who lost their jobs, for those who have been praying for your husband, for your wife, for your children, for your grandchildren, for those who are praying for job for such a long time, sabi sa Bible, for those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. God will strengthen us. God will be with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Be hopeful. Trust in God's faithfulness. And how can we be hopeful? Allow me to share with you some biblical truths to hang on for us to be 
hopeful and allow me to use the acrostic trust okay now let me start letter t trust in god he is omniscient all-knowing god proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight god our god is greater than our heart he knows everything wala po tayong maitatago sa ating panginoon he knows even our future why do you need to trust in god you have to trust in god because god is testing your character he is testing your faith he is building you he is shaping you to the person that you want him to be god is a god of the impossible he is the god who parted the red sea he is the god who dried up the jordan river and he is even the god who saved the lives of shadrach meshach and abednego from that heat of the blazing furnace there is hope in god allow me to share to you of my story when god transferred me in 2013 to to dubai and he gave me the opportunity to work at the american university in the emirates so in this university 90 percent of the students are locals they are muslims and so with the teachers and the management also are muslims and one of the rule of the president of that university american university in the emirates is that no people especially among filipinos should convene and have a group discussion or group chat wherever in the university he he, he does not allow that but praise god for giving me the courage to uh, start a life lesson meeting in the university and so agnes was with me and grace alcantara was with me and we were able also to invite uh, janitors who came from nepal india africa some of our staff and some of our professors in the university also uh, joined us in our life lesson family meeting despite that uh, rule that regulation from the president for us not to be allowed to have a, a group chat or group meeting now when we trust in the lord he will take charge he will take charge and true enough with that life lesson meeting we have ricky was with us and he decided in his heart to start a life lesson family meeting in in karama where he was living and that's how we started our life lesson meeting in karama so just like shadrach meshach and abednego who whose lives were threatened they did not fear king nebuchadnezzar but instead fear the lord and they continued what god wants them to do because they believe in god they believe in the promises of god so when we trust in the lord when we trust in god with all of our hearts god will be with us he will never leave us the second one is letter r which is retreat rejoice and reignite so when we are in that devastating situation when we are being shattered in any situations of our lives retreat lang kapatid okay lang yan 
pag tayo po ay nagre-retreat, hindi ibig sabihin na tayo ay talunan. You know what I mean? We just retreat. Why? Because we have to be re-energized. We have to be rejuvenated. And in our retreat, we have to rejoice. Why? Because the Word of God in Philippians 4, 4-6 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Rejoice even in the midst of your sufferings, pains. It is for the glory of God. Hopeless and negative thoughts are garbages. We need to unload. So just relax. Be reignited. Amen. Turn your worries into prayer. God understands all your hearts and pains. You know what? When I am so devastated, when I feel so down and lonely and lost, I just remember the Lord. He too suffered. He too was humiliated. He was also persecuted, insulted, slapped. I just reflect on the sufferings of the Lord. And I, I do me time, you know, me time with God. I, I love to have uh, me time with God. Where I, I go to the mall and just have coffee and spend there for four hours, five hours, you know, just talking to God, commune with God. I love that moment. I love that moment. And it helps me a lot. It encourages me. It uh, rejuvenates my spirit. Now, when you are in a hopeless situation, just try counting your blessings. You know, I, I, I thank God for the wisdom given to our pastors and leaders in Dubai who is celebrating their ninth year anniversary this year. They have this gratitude challenge, and I'm also doing this gratitude challenge uh, for 21 days, which started uh, last November 10. So, in this way, we can see that when we write the blessings that we receive from the Lord, and we are thankful for every blessing that we receive from the Lord, it supersedes all our disappointments. It lessens our disappointments. So stop complaining. Stop grumbling. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not retaliate. Hindi po sila pumalag, hindi sila lumaban, hindi sila nag-complain. Basta nagpatali lang sila and they just allow themselves to be thrown into that blazing furnace. Brethren, in the midst of our hopeless situation, there is still hope. Why? Because God has promised that He will be with us. He, be, he will be with us even in the fire, even in the floods. He will be with us. He will never leave us. Be grateful to God. Be grateful even if you are suffering. God has a purpose for you. Every day that we exist, God has a purpose for you. Just retreat, just rejoice, and be reignited. So another biblical truth that we can hang on for us to be hopeful is letter U, which is unseen future, is in God's hands. Brethren, our future is not in our hands. And we cannot do anything about it. Romans 8, 24 to 25 says, 
For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So hoping in the unseen, even if we can see what's ahead of us, increases our faith. And hope grows as we learn more about God and His Word. Yan po ang katotohanan. We cannot really grow in our faith in the Lord if it just, we just lie down and, you know, just uh, live a life that is so comfortable. We have to seek God. Seek God through His Word. Read the Bible. Pray to God. Commune with God every day. And so, dyan po natin mas malalim na makikilala ang ating Panginoon. And our faith will grow. Our courage and faith should be anchored on our sovereign God. Our God is powerful. Our God is able and faithful. Our known God is more powerful than the unknown. According to Papi. He is so powerful. Sabi nga ni Pastor Sheila, fear of the unknown can immobilize us. It will immobilize us. It will freeze us. Hindi po tayo makakaisip ng mabuti. Hindi tayo makakakilos ng mabuti. Why? Because we worry a lot. And to worry is a sin. It is not of the Lord. It is not of God. And worry robs us of our joy. Worry will rob the blessings that God has prepared for us. Always remember that we are more than conquerors. Focus on God. I thank God for the testimony of Mac last Friday. So I was so blessed with that when she shared about their journey now that they are in New Zealand and desiring to, to really establish a ministry there in New Zealand. And we can see how God moved in their lives. That even in, during the lockdown, God had provided a work, a temporary work for Sister Mac because Brother Freddy uh, has no work when it's locked down in New Zealand. Walang, walang trabaho si, si Freddy. So, thank God that uh, Sister Mac was able to find this temporary job and uh, they, they're having a little earning for, for them to sustain. And then, just in time that uh, the temporary job of Mac will end, God again showed his love, his faithfulness, his power to Mac and Freddy by giving a permanent job in a large company to Sister Mac. And she has now started working in that big company in New Zealand. See how God moves? Sister Mac and Freddy did not worry about the future. They just place their future in the hands of God, believing that God will move, that God will provide all their needs. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Thank God. Another biblical truth that we can hang on for us to be hopeful is letter S, salvation should be our focus. In Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 2, it says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Brethren, again, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. God can make us fruitful even in the midst of our sufferings. The more that we delight in Jesus, the more fruitful we are. Sabi ko nga sa previous preaching ko, focus sa mission, wag sa 
con su misión. Fear God rather than men. God has chosen us and appointed us to be his ambassadors. Now, for those leaders, pastors who 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 are wary uh, with their uh, members who are not showing up anymore, do not worry. Just continue to pray for them. God will bring them back to his fold. I understand, naramdaman po din po yan, but when we show our faithfulness to God, kung tayo lang ay nagpapatuloy sa Panginoon, you know, kahit may mga challenges tayong kinakaharap, maging sa ministry, I believe God will sustain us. God will be there for us. He will grant us victory. And I am happy and I am blessed and thankful and grateful to God na mayroon po tayong mga kapatiran with the help of our uh, pastors, leaders who are following up old members. Now we have old members coming back to God now and counting more, believing that God will touch their hearts. So, dapat focus lang tayo sa ipinapagawa sa atin ng Panginoon. Focus on the salvation of the lost. Many are lost right now. There are people who are at the verge of suicide. They need encouragement. They need the word of God. They need hope. And the hope we have is in Jesus. Amen. So another thing for us to hang on, another biblical truth is letter T, which is treasure the process of your journey. Romans 8.18 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Wow! This is such a very inspiring and encouraging promise from the Lord. That despite this sufferings, these trials, these challenges that we have, no matter how down we are right now, this is just a season of our lives. In the end, we will see the light of the tunnel. There is that glory that awaits before us. That is a promise of God. Let's hang on to that promise. Just treasure the journey. Treasure this moment. Seize this moment developing our relationship with God. Seize this moment developing our relationship with our loved ones, our families. Seize this moment serving the Lord. Let us not dwell on our problems. Hayaan natin ang problema dumaan. Huwag tayong tumambay doon sa problema na yan. Treasure the process of our journey. We have, our life is very short, you know. We will age maybe 70, 60, 70, or 75. We don't know. But the promise of God is eternal. And that is millions of years ahead of us after our death. Learn from our difficulties. God has a purpose for it. The problems we have will develop our perseverance, strengthen our character, and deepen our trust in God. And it gives us greater confidence to face the future. God did not say that when we receive Him, he will be, we will be immune from trials. Hindi po yun. Even if we are Christians, even if we are followers of Jesus, we will still experience challenges. We will still experience hardships. But believe in it, there is always hope in the Lord Jesus. Learn, discover, and be excited sa mga nangyayari sa buhay mo sa ngayon. Ask God what He wants you to do. 
in the midst of these sufferings. Ask God what He wants you to do in this season of your lives. God will use our trials, our challenges, to position us for a blessing, for a breakthrough, and for victories. There is hope in God. Again, may I review what are those biblical truths that we can hang on for us to be hopeful? Letter T, trust in God. He is omniscient, all-knowing God. Letter R, retreat, rejoice, and reignite. Letter U, unseen future is in God's hands. Letter S, salvation should be our focus. And letter T, treasure the process of your journey. I hope those insights that God has revealed to me will be planted in our hearts. God never uses anyone deeply until He tests them greatly. Are you seeing a structured dream at the moment? Broken lives? A hopeless future? God can fix it. He is working for our good. Put your hope in God. Do not magnify the challenges over your faith. Never give up hope. Keep hoping and trust in God's faithfulness. James 1 verses 2 to 4 and 12 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. Verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And our memory verse for today is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 18, which says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Thank you and God bless you all. And before I end up, allow me to greet my BFF, my mentor, my discipler, a very good friend and sister, Pastora Sheila. God bless you. I love you so much and I miss you. God bless you all. Maraming salamat po.